switching to the phone to record this at three in the morning because you can see that uh, there is a little bit of lightning out there. It's also a full moon, so pan up to the sky. And I think you can almost make out that island as well. That's how light it is at three in the morning. So this is the island of Sibiru, draped in a great big veil of thick misty clouds having just gone through pretty nasty uh, weather as we came round the corner and uh, the entrance is made difficult by the fact that we can't see uh, the colour of the water, can't make out reefs really and um, we're going to be using transit so there's a couple of uh, little islands we've got to line up, make sure we get our approach correct and essentially we're going down there and around there um, but not before that little patch there and that island there are in line with each other got a couple of guides to help us as we come down the inside of the island there um, that's where we're heading uh, but we've got to watch out for that it's a drying uh, river mouth so <laughs> keep an eye on that. Well, it's been a very wet day today. The weather that we saw yesterday hasn't really cleared up since then. So we've been sitting here getting all cozy with a kind of miserable day. It reminds us of a, uh, a rainy summer's day in the UK. We're planning to go off probably tonight to get down to the end of uh, Seberu, but we thought we'd nip into town first, just see if we can do a bit of light provisioning. And the town here is amusingly named Tabicat. We thought we've got to come and check out Tabacat. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but uh, it's just a little uh, settlement just by the jetty over there, which has been very busy with fishing boats and a row row uh, ferry as well. So we're kind of hoping that maybe they've dropped off some provisions. So we might have to switch to the waterproof camera, nip ashore, and we'll just go for a little wander and go and check it out. A little bit sticky this mud. Uh, we tried to get up there and um, well we sunk. Fortunately yesterday when we came in I was watching the local fishermen and noticed that this is where they tie up their canoes and it's a lot harder this mud here. Now if I pan down you might be able to see all the creatures here. A lot of little crabs and loads of conical shelled invertebrate or whatever they're called crawling around and hiding in their little holes 
and this is much easier to walk on. Okay, this guy's just spotted my uh, tattoo and he's showing me his. This is a traditional uh, Mantawi yeah, tattoo. Mantawai. Can you lift up? Show me. Sibirut Island is the cradle of Mentawi culture and these tattoos have become a Mentawi icon. Dating back to 1500 BC, the people here are believed to be the oldest tattooed community in the world. They use a tapered wooden tip with dye made from soot from firewood or bamboo and banana leaves mixed together in a coconut shell with a juice from sugarcane. Along with other Mentawi traditions, when they colonised the area, the Dutch banned the practice, a decision continued for some time by the newly formed Javanese government. Happily, it seems tribal tattooing in Sibirut hasn't died and it's good to see younger generations maintaining it. So that was Shudi he introduced himself as and he is from this area, also known as Pukai, I think. I noticed that name appearing on the chart yesterday. We know it's Tabikat. I think Tabikat is actually the name of the mountain uh, that we're anchored in front of. Fascinating to see his uh, local tribal tattoos there. What's happening Liz? He's going to give us a lift. It's about a kilometre up the road. <laughs> when you get... Isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Now, now yes. we just, now yes. we just walk slowly. Yeah. Uh, it's another village right yeah. at the end. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay Liz. Okay. <laughs> okay thank you. you. Well, that was quite an experience. Well, they're on their way to the next village, which is that they are further down the island. And we've just driven straight through Tabakat, which is pretty much where we wanted to go. Uh, over a bridge, along a river. Yeah, brilliant. Well, I think if we'd carried on on that journey, we would have uh, gone on to the next town, which is just a little bit too far to walk back. We just wanted to check out uh, Tabakat. And I noticed when I was looking on Google Maps, when I did have internet connection, that at one end uh, is the local mosque. And at the other end is a local church, and this is something we see a lot of around here. Oh, there are a lot of churches. And this one here, we're about to reach, is the local Catholic church. <laughs> local timber merchant there local carpenter I should say with uh, some family just hanging out and see no evil hear no evil speak no evil next door chatting away this little village has a very lazy feel to it um, I don't think there's much in the way of communications we've tried our phone there's no internet although there seems to be a lot of cables everywhere but there's just a nice sense of community. Well, kind of what you'd expect really from somewhere like this. And the thing we found the most fascinating are the different window styles they have. Some of these are quite French looking. Some remind me of my uh, aunt and uncle's old laundry cottage in Suffolk. Uh, the architecture is quite interesting. Liz is making friends and influencing people at the local uh, grocers. The local boys hanging out, causing trouble. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes, 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 yes! <laughs> Monkeys! <laughs> Give us thumbs up. Yeah. Boys will be boys, of course.
<laughs> ah, rubbish. Well, that was a nice little interlude, always worth taking the dinghy ashore, even though it started to rain and um, it was a bit overcast. The lighting wasn't so good for cinematography, but always worth doing it. Nice little experience, meet a few local people, have a bit of fun. And in fact, we were just visited just now by seven young lads in a dugout and one slightly older boy uh, on a little mini surfboard. And we gave them some fishing hooks and it's all quite fun until they start asking for money. And uh, two problems with this. First of all, we have a policy not to give money, especially to kids that are just randomly ask you for it. But the other reason is that we don't actually have any money. We have run out of cash. We were hoping there'd be a bank here. There isn't. Uh, there was a bank at Tello, but it's the sort of bank that doesn't take Visa, only takes local cards. So we're hoping that the next main island down, um, which is the capital of Mentawi Islands, will have somewhere where we can get some cash. Anyway, uh, the time is now five o'clock in the evening. Uh, the tide has been rising for a couple of hours and we figured we may as well go down the coast at night time. There isn't much to see, but there's always something to see. Um, but we're going to have one set of tide against us and one with us at least. So it's going to take um, a good 13 hours or so. And we just thought we had a good night's sleep last night. So we might just as well uh, do a night passage so that we arrive um, at the next island's name I've forgotten um, which is supposed to be full of lots of lovely anchorages so we'll arrive there in the morning we'll have a little you know um, little nap and then we've got the rest of the day to play Here goes, we're off on our little night passage and we're seen off with a rather splendid looking sky. That's where we've just been. And there's a few fishing boats out, dotted around. Always get a nice wave off of them. Not sure whether they'll be out here all night. Something we need to keep an eye on. But that's our destination somewhere down there. You can't see it because it's about 55 miles it's really really beautiful here um, these islands are really lush absolutely full of forests and coconut palms uh, but what's weird you may have already said this what's really weird is having so much surf around us everywhere everywhere there's just surf because there's reef all the way around as well and um, you, nav you navigated in through uh, using offline maps didn't you to avoid the reefs so I'm really looking forward to going ashore, seeing what's going on there. Maybe we can have a look and see if there's any coral that we can get to that isn't going to get without the waves hitting us. But also I'm really looking forward to, and I hope that the wind dies down a bit so you can get the drone up and you can really see where we are with all this reef and the surfs around mm. us. It should be interesting. In last week's episode, we asked you to put FTB mug in the comments. That was so that you could win one of these fabulous objects. Competition's finished now. So in the next couple of days, we're going to be writing all those names out, cutting them up, putting them in the hat and drawing the winner. 
but you don't have to wait until next week's video to find out who won because we're going to be putting the winner in our community tab. This is what the community tab looks like on a desktop browser and this is what it looks like in the YouTube app. Click community and you'll see our stream of updates. There are images, links to some of our favorite videos and polls. Thank you to everyone who voted in our poll in which we asked you to let us know what kind of content you're looking for on FTB. We've had over 550 replies so far. So as soon as we've made the draw, that name will be going on the community tab. Keep a lookout for it. If you want to be notified when the post goes up, make sure you're subscribed and have hit the notification bell for the post to appear on your home page. In the app, click the subscription button at the bottom of your screen when you find a drop down menu giving you the option to see videos only or videos and posts. Thanks very much for watching this episode. We hope you enjoyed the Mentawi Islands, all oh, the adventures just beginning. So in the meantime, peace and fair winds.